Other benefits to the raw goat's milk are enzymes. I'm not going to get too much into how important they are, but they're extremely important. This product fights yeast better than anything I've seen on the market, and I think a lot of you can attest to that. And that's because it's very high in propylic acid. No other milk, cow, sheep, camel, whatever, donkey, has propylic acid in it. Also, conjugated linoleic acid is called the cancer-fighting fat. They did research in Europe, and they took almost 5,000 women and, and gave them raw milk. And the ones who drank the, the most raw milk were up to 75% less likely to get breast cancer. That's huge. It's huge. In a, in a society that's losing women to breast cancer. Instead of marching with the pink ribbon, start handing out raw goat's milk. <laughs> It'll do more good. Antioxidants are very important. It has one of the best antioxidants called glutathione. This is great for any digestion problem, including pancreatitis, because it requires no work from the digestive apparatus to be absorbed. This is, this is a product that Mother Nature puts on this earth to feed babies, all right? It's high in medium chain fatty acids. Those are fatty acids, those are fats that don't require lipase to be digested, so that's why it's so good for pancreatitis. But it's also good, thank you. It's also good for revving up the, the, uh, the metabolism and actually can help in losing weight, okay? Goat milk is a natural antihistamine. That means it can take the place of Benadryl, actually works better than Benadryl. Now you heard Kim talking earlier that they treat this product like it's liquid gold, okay? And the reason that we treat it like it's liquid gold is because of the results that we have seen with this product on the market, okay? It's nothing short of miraculous in some conditions, okay? I don't know if you heard me telling her earlier, but I had a customer call me up. and had, She had a Bichon was living in an e collar because it was self-mutilating because it kept itching. This dog has been fed a raw diet for the last five years and is still in this condition. And I told her, I don't think I can do anything to help you unless you're willing to do a 30-day milk fast. And she says, I've spent thousands of dollars at the vet. This dog is miserable. I'm miserable. I'll try anything. So she did. And she called me up 28 days into the milk fast. And a, and a goat milk fast is for severe conditions where we take them off all food, all supplements, all medication, strictly goat milk, 30 days, enough to cover all of their calories. That's how perfect of a food this product is. I've already taken a dog six months and had him strictly goat's milk because the dog was dying from malabsorption. He could not absorb any nutrients. No matter how much we fed him, he was getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So we took him off all food and gave him six months. He was actually cured in four, but I figured, hey, I had a veterinarian uh, managing him. I might as well take him another two months. But anyhow, 28 days after that Bichon was on this milk, she called me up. He collar was off, and it was 99% resolved. Okay? That dog probably would have been euthanized had not we had the goat's milk. The way I figured out to do the 30-day goat milk fast was I read a book called The Untold Story of Milk by a naturopathic doctor by the name of Ron Schmidt. And Ron Schmidt documented in his book about how the Mayo Clinic developed what was called the raw milk cure. And I like that term because they didn't say raw milk treatment, they said raw milk cure. And they listed a whole bunch of different diseases that they cured with this raw milk cure. Everything from cancer to liver disease, kidney disease, neurological problems, diabetes, uh, asthma, all kinds of things. So I was reading this book and I sent it to my sister who lived in Ashland, Oregon, and at the time my mother was living with her. My mother picked up the book. My mother was 70 years old and she had diabetes for 30 years. She had COPD so bad that she was sleeping with oxygen and her blood oxygen level was 91, it was supposed to be 98, all right? She had a very damaged liver, she had a very damaged kidneys from the insulin in her blood. She had high blood pressure, she had edema swelling in her legs and she was losing her hair. She was not in good condition. She picked up the book and read it. And she called me up, and my mother had been on 12 prescription drugs for 30 years, and that's what damaged her liver. My mother was not a smoker. She ne we never figured out where she got the COPD from. So what? she picked up this book and read about all these things, and she called me up and she said, I'm tired of being sick, I, I want, and the pills aren't helping me, I'm going to do the raw milk cure. So I uh, <clears throat> was happy that she was living with my sister, because if she, anything happened, it would be my sister's fault, not mine. <laughs> My mother actually used our, our product. She drank a gallon a day. She did this in August of 2011. 
she took herself off all her medication, she fasted for 48 hours, and then she started drinking milk. And every day for that 30 days, she took her blood pressure, her blood oxygen, and um, her blood sugar. And every day, for th three times a day, you, every week you saw her values go back to normal, okay? At the end of 30 days, she had no coughing, no wheezing, she wasn't using anything as far as her um, breathing was. Her blood sugar was in normal range, and her blood oxygen without any medication or inhalers was now 98. And I had to laugh because I was in awe of what I, what I actually didn't see, what my sister was telling me and what I saw, but my mom's excitement was the fact that she could see the moons in her fingers because she had such poor oxygen getting to her, her extremities that her fingers were always white. And now she could see the moons of her fingers and that's what made my mom excited. She went to the uh, doctors and had her liver values taken. This is a woman who's had elevated liver values for 30 years. They were now low normal. Okay, her kidney values went from 178 down to 70. Her hair grew back, her edema went away, and she went to the eye doctors, and my mother has macular degeneration, and she improved it by three times. And she did all that just by doing a milk fast for 30 days on, on goat milk. That was in August of 2011. She's still medication free. She has more energy than I do because she comes over and cooks and cleans for me and I can keep up with her. <laughs> she's has so much energy, she started applying jobs, but nobody wanted to hire. She's now 72, so we made her work for us for free. But <laughs> she, what does she eat now? Yeah. What's that? What does she eat now? She eats, does she, she her drink, diet or? Uh, no, uh, she drinks uh, a pint of our raw goat's milk every morning, and she eats two low carb diets. They do, they have taken her blood sugar values for over a three month period, and they have never been better even when she was on the metformin, which was. Uh, her diabetes drug. Um, it, she's uh, absolutely amazing. We call her the uh, goat milk um, trophy lady or whatever. But anyhow, what what was the good part about that is my mom documented everything from how many times she went to the bathroom to, to all her values. But I called her up in t the first two weeks and I said, Mom, you've got to be starving. Okay, you haven't eaten anything. And she said, I am, I've never been more satisfied, I have no cravings, and she said for the first time in 30 years she can remember not craving carbohydrates. And that's because the milk killed the yeast in her body that was encouraging her to eat the carbohydrates. Because she told me she wasn't hungry, which is what gave me the confidence to do it with the dogs. Because I would have never done it had my mother done it and told me I've never been so satisfied. One of the first cases we did was a dog uh, the owner applied Revolution, which is a topical, and it caused the dog to have malabsorption and bloody diarrhea. And the dog was, this is not the one I took uh, uh, six months, but the dog was um, just wasting away. And I convinced her to do 30 days, actually we did six weeks of goat's milk with, with that dog, and she commented that was the first time the dog never tried to get in the trash, it was when the dog was on the milk, okay? Again, gave me great confidence that they're very satisfied. So if you ever have a case that you, you, you can't figure out how to how to address, I did it for my dogs, and they were healthy, just because I wanted to see how they did. Yes? So does she still do the revolution or no? No, she has never gone back to doing the revolution. <laughs> yeah. So nothing? She, no. Um, she just does natural things now. You know, diastasis or some of the, the um, essential oils. But the reason I told you about my mother is I wanted to give you um, a full understanding of how powerful this product can be and what we've seen it do. Any questions on the milk? I've got a Roddy who does not like the goat's milk. Oh, that's a shame. There's a, there's like a small percentage that doesn't. Is there any way that I can get it where she would be able to have the benefits of it? Is there something I could add to it or do? Um, she loves the fish stock. The fish stock is almost as good as, as the goat's milk. Okay. So I would, yeah, I would keep trying it occasionally. I've had had customers tell me that okay, at first when I tried it, they oh, didn't she like just it. turns her head. She wants, she wants no part of it. And her, her pit bull sister will come in and drink and it. Just drink it all out. She yeah. doesn't want to be part of it. So, um, a couple of my customers have added it to the water bowl, okay. and that kind of got them used to um, okay. the flavor. I don't know if that'll help in your case, okay. but that did help in a couple cases. Thanks. Whatever.
I'm not, I've thought about that, and then I thought maybe she may not eat her food. That's how mine is. Try adding the fish stock to the milk. Now you like the lamb chowder. Right? Right? Okay. I'll try. Okay, if most of you have used the goat's milk, you know that it takes forever to thaw. Right? If you try to thaw it in the refrigerator. Um, and once it's thawed, it, it really has a hard time going bad. It just goes to cheese and whey. Okay? It does get more sour. It does get more curded. Um, any other questions? The, uh, the two cultures that we add to the milk that I talked about in the beginning, if you look on this, those cultures are written in here. Um, the reason we add those is they don't need to be added. Raw goat milk comes with over 200 different probiotic species already in it. Okay? That's pretty amazing because most pills and powders only come with about 20, 25 different strains at, at best. And that's why it's so successful, because it has such a full spectrum. But those two cultures that we added are actually buttermilk cultures. And the reason we add them is they grow at 42 degrees. All right? So we actually milk the goats, hold it for 42, at 42 degrees for seven days, and let those two cultures eat up the sugar in the milk, along with the honey, too. The reason we do that is bad bacteria, like Salmonella, Listeria, Campylobacter, can't grow until about 72 degrees. OK? So as soon as you start thawing this milk, those start growing again, and that's our safety factor. That's why this is different than raw milk that you can buy locally, because it has that extra safety factor, which then actually makes it more nutritious. And plus the added cinnamon, right? Uh, the honey actually feeds the bacteria, and the cinnamon is so minimal that we can't make any claims. It's just yeah. We put it in there as a palatant, thinking that the cats wouldn't like the sour flavor from the fermentation, and it turned out they didn't like the cinnamon. <laughs> so, literally, we put a quarter cup and 60 gallons. So, I can't taste it when I drink it. My sister can taste it a little bit. But that's another thing that makes a difference. Yeah, it does, it does make a difference, but I can't, it's just so good. Okay, has anybody tried our fermented fish stock? Awesome. Good stuff. Um, are you guys familiar with the benefits of what's called bone broth or fish or stock? You guys? Okay. The way we make this is we take a whole fish that's been filleted and we use a white fish called sole. Okay? And we, we get the head, the bones, and everything. We throw it in a very big pot and we boil it for 24 hours. Okay? Then we take that liquid off, that's the stock part, okay? The other part, the ground fermented sardines, we take sardines, whole sardines, we cut them up, we put them in a container, and we throw in what's called raw uh, goat milk whey, okay? Whey is the byproduct of cheese fermentation, that's where all your probiotics are. And we let that whey ferment those sardines for three days at room temperature. <laughs> we then pulverize those sardines. 30% of this product is ground sardines, 70% is fish stock. Okay? And what we're after in the stock part is what's called gelatin. Has everybody ever heard of gelatin? Gelatin is three amino acids, arginine, proline, and glycine. Do you ever see how gelatin holds water? It's called jello, right? Right? Very, okay, it's a very unique molecule, but they also know it has many healing properties. And okay, that's what we were after in that part. Okay, so why feed the fish stock? Okay. You guys using anybody using glucosamine and chondroitin for for okay. Glucosamine and chondroitin are two of basically seven glycoaminoglucans that help heal joints, okay? Why they chose those two, I don't know. This product has all seven in them, all right? Because of boiling down the bones. But the, what most products don't have in is that gelatin. That gelatin actually lays on the joints and brings moisture to synovial fluids. But besides that, it can actually work as a cushion, all right? This is not a product where you feed it to a dog with deteriorating joints and you see an immediate result. This is a three months down the road seeing results because this will actually repair the joints, not just make the inflammation go down. 
okay? So this is pretty unique. You won't get anything that heals joints better than that product. One of the reasons we use the head of the fish is the head contains the thyroid. So it has good thyroid nutrients and a good source of iodine. So for your hypothyroid dogs, this is an excellent product. One of the things that I like the best about this product is the kidney support, okay? When you feed fish stock, you can actually lower a dog's protein need by 50% which is pretty amazing and pretty important for when we're in end-stage kidney disease, all right? Besides that, the kidneys make what's called arginine. It's an amino acid that the, the uh, fish stock is very high in arginine. Arginine is required by the immune system, the heart, and also for making nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is that feel good. Um, Roxanne always laughs, she's like, yeah, it's like the laughing acid at the, at the uh, at the dentist. This product also with the gelatin, do you guys ever hear what's called leaky gut? Leaky gut is where there's holes in the gut and it allows things from the gut into the blood that don't belong there and then it causes all kinds of problems in the body. The gelatin in here can actually um, close up those holes. Dogs that have deteriorating teeth, this actually can remineralize teeth. And then because of all the other parts, it has a general immune boost to it. Uh, fermented sardines will actually stimulate insulin production. So if you ever have any dogs that have um, diabetes, this would also be a good product for them. Any dog with epilepsy, they have a lot of research on gelatin therapy for humans with epilepsy. Um, there's two things in that product. One, it naturally detoxifies heavy metals from the brain, and two, will actually coat the nerve cells and lessen the amount and the severity of the seizures. So if you know any dogs with seizures, this is a great product for that too. This doesn't take quite as long to thaw. So how do you use it with the goat's milk? Like every other day? Or do you I, I use the fish stock in the morning because I don't like to sleep with a dog that smells like fish. <laughs> 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 and I use Honest to truth, that's, that's the reason. By the time, you know, the end of the day, it doesn't smell like fish anymore, and then I used to go milk at night. Now, you saw Will, he's a youngster, but I'm preventing joint deterioration. That's my goal. Okay, not. So, the same, like, my dog gets six ounces a day, but he still gets six ounces a day. You know what? It, I didn't do that on purpose. I backed out the um, dosage of the uh, fish stock because there's a lot of uh, documentation on how much to feed a human. So, I just backed that out, and it ended up being the same amount. So it's two for small, four for medium, and six for large. So if you're doing both of them, you still stuff. use six and six. Okay. Yep. Along with their food. Along with their food. food. Yep. The, the yeah. other benefit, yes. If you're involved with the uh, hypothyroid, they're on medication for that. It's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough iodine or or, or anything. It, you might. But it would be so slight you wouldn't see the difference. Okay. So, so in other words, when they go in for their normal checkup, the, they might reduce. So it's it. not. Gonna it's not going to knock them out. Yeah, okay. and, and take the place of that medication. Uh, uh, are you all planning to do it in quart size? Because I'm getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, it's probably by the end of the year. Okay. It's just uh, you got to put these things out. You know, when I put the the fermented milk out, it's curded milk. I didn't think anybody would buy it. <laughs> And, and it's it's like, you know, we started out with 60 goats, now we milk 2,000. Um, I'm putting out fermented sardines. I'm like, I'm not quite sure how that's going to stick to that. So I like to do it in little quantities first and then move to the big. Fermented fish stock is one of the few things that actually can stimulate um, appetite. The gelatin will actually pull the digestive juices into the gut. This is an excellent product to use with kibble. It will help digest the kibble. 